she is experiencing a problem that many of us who like to have formal dinners have experienced. When a course is done or the meal is done, guests will decide to help out, help to clear the table, and then all of a sudden she has a large congregation meeting in the kitchen. The formal dinner has lost its formality when that happens and it can be rather discouraging and let's talk about why it happens first and then I have some potential solutions or things that could help uh, solve the problem. But first of all, why it happens. A hundred years ago when formal dinners were really the end thing, there was a big difference in society. Even middle class families had at least one servant or hired person that came in to help, whether it was a cook, whether it was someone who would serve the table, or someone who would clean. Those days are mostly over now. You're going to be very hard pressed to find anybody who um, you can hire for a dinner who would know anything about a formal dinner. So what has that done? It's taken the host and hostess away from the table, away from the dinner, doing what they used to hire others to do. So the result of that is the guests have come to see the host and hostess at the dinner, and so they're wanting to be with the host and hostess, so they decide they'll chip in and try to help. If you want your guests to have a truly formal dinner, here's some things that you can do. First of all, you um, may or may not be able to have your spouse do this, um, but if you have a spouse and they are not very busy during this time, you can ask them to do what I'm about to tell you. But the chances are, if you do, if you do have a spouse, they're already going to have tasks that they're doing and you have tasks that you're doing and together you're trying to make this thing work. So if that's the case, get someone else from the table, someone who you can trust. Tell that person that um, you really want everyone to have a formal experience and that you want them to stay seated, but you want to ask that one person to help you clear the table so that things go away quickly and doesn't give the opportunity for people to get up and begin to migrate to the kitchen. That person can also be tasked with telling others, oh no, stay seated, I, I'll, I'll take care of that. It works a little bit better when it's them versus the host or hostess, because people tend to feel sorry for the host and hostess and they want to help. But if someone else is saying, no, I'm covering this, then there's more likelihood they will leave, uh, leave the kitchen out of the situation. They won't travel or migrate there. Something else you can do when you get in the kitchen, though, with the dirty dishes, is you can use something like this. Now this actually says utensil jar on it. It's made in Italy. It's actually for your silverware, for dirty silverware. So what you do is you put a couple drops of soap in here and you put uh, warm water in. And then you, um, as, you bring, as you clear the table, you just put the silverware immediately in here. That way you don't need to wash it right then. You probably have other courses, maybe dessert, something else that you're taking care of. You don't want to have to deal with the utensils, dirty utensils right now. If you leave them on the counter though, you may get people coming and trying to help you in the kitchen and um, start the migration to the kitchen all over again. But if they're in here, most people don't know what this is, so it'll intimidate them a little bit. They'll see there must be a purpose to this. You have them soaking in there for some reason. They'll probably leave them alone. You could then stack your plates in the sink or on the counter if you don't want to put them in the sink. With this though, another benefit to it besides um, the crowd control in the kitchen would be that when you are ready to do your dishes, what are your silverware, whether it be um, hand wash or dishwasher, it's going to come out clean out of here or if there is still any food particles on it, they're going to just wipe right off. So if you're washing it by hand, you could use some hot water and additional soap at that time and then rinse them in cold water, or you could just use cold water if you're going to just put them right in the dishwasher. So this is really a time saver as well. So I highly recommend uh, one of these utensil jars. So another problem you may find 
is that people go right off to the kinship when they first get there. They don't stay in your formal living room, parlor, whatever you want to call it. They just head right to the kitchen. Well, that is now a job for your spouse. Your spouse, uh, or if you don't have a spouse, a close friend, someone who's going to keep the guests entertained in the living room or parlor, or whatever you want to call it. Because once it starts, it's all over. You, you want to keep that kitchen clear. Um, I personally don't like people in my kitchen other than my wife when um, we're doing a dinner. There's added pressure to make sure that everything stays absolutely spotless in the kitchen. And that can be very hard if you're making a several course meal. It's not like those old days where there were people in the kitchen working with each other. It's, it's not like that. It's not like a big house in England that had a hundred servants in it that were just cleaning away and working all the time. It, it's not that way anymore. So there's that pressure that's there. And it's nice when that pressure is not there and that people are out of that area. Um, something that I um, want to share with you too, and I've had it in another video before, was this book. It's called The Butler's Guide. And um, I'll put a, uh, a link to it in the description on Amazon, if it's still there. It was last time I checked. And this has a lot of resources as far as how to formally serve a table. So if you want to even make it look that much more authentic and be that much more authentic, this is your way to go. Also includes um, tutorials and napkin folding. So it has a lot of neat stuff in it. I want to go back though real quick to my childhood and tell you about what formal dinners were like there. Um, we had a formal dining room just off the kitchen. Um, in my home now, I have a butler's pantry off of my dining room. and That was very important to me uh, when we moved to, to have a butler's pantry. That's actually where I do all the cleanup of the fine china. It never goes into the kitchen, or if it does, only a few pieces that accidentally get in there or something. Um, normally, all the fine china stays in the butler's pantry. And it's a nice area for me to wash up uh, the china. Uh, my wife tends to do more of the cooking, not all of it, but more. And so she has a space to do that, and I have a space to do the cleanup work. And they're not, um, they're next to each other, but they're not the same sink. So we have two sinks we can be using at once. It's, it's very handy. Um, but when I was growing up, um, my mother tended to do the entire dinner. Um, in later years, my father, um, helped with some of the cooking, but in the earlier days he would do a lot of the cleaning um, before dinner and he'd go through that kind of stuff in the house, but uh, my mother would do the cooking. And she wanted to concentrate on her food and it really bothered her when um, people would congregate in the kitchen because um, she had a lot to do. She was very busy. And so it was my father and my job to make sure that people were entertained and were out of the kitchen. And it works very well. It makes, it makes everybody happy. And that's what your formal living room or um, parlor is for. It's for entertaining. It's also a great place to send guests after the dinner. And that's another thing your friend at the table could help with, getting people to move on to a parlor. In the old days, the men and women would separate. The men would go to the, the gentleman's parlor, the women would go to the ladies' parlor. And the reason being, they liked to talk about subjects that the others were not interested in. For example, the men would talk about politics. And that was considered very impolite uh, to talk about that in front of the ladies. The ladies wanted to talk about other things. So um, with that said, that's kind of gone away too. Our society's changed a lot, and you can argue whether it's for the good or for the worse or, or a little bit of both. But the fact of the matter is it has changed. And so to bring that formality back, we really have to um, work hard at it. It's, it's not easy anymore in our current society, especially when our guests quite often don't really know what a formal dinner is. They haven't had that experience. They haven't had that experience of being served a very nice meal. And as a host or hostess, it's 
it's very good of you to want to give that to people. It's something that is, is a great gift that you're giving them. Don't let it discourage you that they don't necessarily know how to accept it. Um, they will learn. Um, they will come to enjoy your dinners. Well, Dee Dee and others who are interested, I hope this helps um, and answers some of the questions and gives you some ideas. If you like this video, please click the like button below and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.